John? Yeah, you know, there's another huge international story going on right now. The remnants of the ceasefire in Ukraine quickly dissolving, if they ever existed to begin with. Leaders of Ukraine, Russia, France, and Germany, they have agreed to make another push to get all sides to abide by the deal, which was reached just last week. This comes on the heels of a major strategic loss for Ukraine, which saw all of its troops abandon a key town after clashes with the pro-Russian rebels right there. Our Nick Payton Walsh joins us live from that town to Baltiva in eastern Ukraine, a crucial rail hub. Nick, you're the only Western journalist there. Give us a sense of what you're seeing. Only Western journalists live here, John. We are seeing behind us a building which I was at two weeks ago, uh, and it was then held by the Ukrainians. Now there are still the same old women in the basement we saw two weeks ago. They haven't left at all. Just heard the horrifying noise of shelling all around them and what devastation that has wrought to the town around us here. The streets littered with damaged armored vehicles. A strange quiet, though, across it. Many houses damaged. I think, frankly, very few have escaped unscathed. But people emerging for the first time. They said last night was the first quiet night they had heard uh, in a very long time. Now, we understand there are still Ukrainian soldiers some distance from the edge of the town. You occasionally hear small arms fire. They seem to have remnants in this town, but it is firmly under separatist control. And behind me, they've been giving out humanitarian aid, uh, food to many of the people here who are furious at the damage done to their town. Many have no idea how they can begin to rebuild their lives. But why is this town so important? Because it wasn't dealt with properly, say the separatists, in the Minsk peace agreement. It was a town that the Ukrainian government wanted to hold on to, that they sent thousands of troops in to try and hold, that the separatists encircled. It's become really a symbol of where this war is going. And the separatists, better equipped, NATO and the Ukraine says, with Russian weapons, even soldiers, have very effectively stormed across it, forcing that withdrawal yesterday. But it is stunning, John to go around the streets here to see people emerging for the first time carrying food back to their homes back some to the basements even where they've been trying to survive through this intense bombardment but above all to see this town now firmly in separatist hands with the question still hanging this violence happened during a supposed ceasefire does that mean that there'll be more violence ahead or are we perhaps going to see a truce of some description, John. You know, Nick, now the Ukrainian leader, Petro Poroshenko, is calling for United Nations and her EU peacekeeping force to come into that country. Leave aside the notion that Russia probably would never accept that to begin with. But if that did happen, it would freeze in place these enormous territorial gains for the pro-Russian rebels over the last few weeks. Well, there are some who say that the goal has always been to create a frozen conflict, that the borders established by the separatists just effectively stay as they are. No real permanent legal agreement, but this is effectively this part of Ukraine sort of secedes in some way. But there are others, and many of the separatist fighters we talk to say the ambition is larger. They want to retake all of the Donetsk region, and perhaps after a military victory like this, they may well feel they have the weaponry, we've clearly seen the weaponry, to continue to take more territory. That's the key thing. There are still presidents now calling this a ceasefire. I'm hearing shelling in the distance. This town had enormous damage done to it. We don't know how many lost their lives, but enormous damage done to it during that supposed ceasefire. If this is a truce, then perhaps the separatists think they can continue to take more territory. That's what we have to see. Does the seizing of the Baltzva mark the end of the separatist ambition or just the beginning of something else. That's what people here are most deeply concerned about and that's of course what must be on the minds of the White House here. Are we looking at the borders of Europe being rewritten through this conflict? John? Our Nick Payton Walsh into Baltimore right now, a city that has changed hands since the supposed ceasefire. Nick, important to see you there. Thanks so much.